Welcome everybody who's joining in to this time of worship with Faith Christian Reformed Church. Our bulletins continue to be available at our website online, or you can contact the church office and ask Nikki or Ashley uh, to add you to the list of those who are receiving the bulletins in the mail every week. Happy Independence Day weekend. We're thankful for our country. In these days of unrest and, and challenge, uh, I've heard a lot of people say, what's coming next in 2020? But in these days of unrest, these days of challenge, we, we pray for our leaders more than ever. And we all, as believers, seek to be a salt and a light in our society. And even though these do seem to be troubling times, we don't want to forget to be thankful to God for all of the blessings that we do have in our nation. We especially thank him for the freedom to worship without fear. Please remember uh, the council's reopening team that team has scheduled a soft opening for in-person worship on Thursday, July 16. Uh, you'll be able to make reservations for one of the 50 spaces. More details are in the bulletin this week, and I think possibly even more will come next week, and maybe we'll have more of those details actually in the service announcement next week. Our call to worship is from Psalm 
24. It's verses 1 through 6. Please join me in reading this responsively, okay? The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Receive this greeting from the Lord as we enter into worship. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn now. It's called, O God of Every Nation. It's not a super familiar song, but the words are very good for July 4th weekend, and we're going to be singing it to a familiar tune. The church is one foundation, so you should be able to sing it out if you do that while watching the service. Let's sing. people of faith, and it's good for us to express what we believe. And we're going to do that this morning with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, Would you join me in saying from the heart today, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe a holy Catholic church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Right now we're going to sing together of the deep, deep love of our God.
Our hearts overflow with praise and with thanksgiving for God's uh, deep love for us, shown especially in Jesus Christ. Uh, The way of praise, the way of thanksgiving is given to us by our God in the Ten Commandments. It's the way of loving God and of loving our neighbors. Please join me as we listen to God's law. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. 
Friends, that's, that's the way of praise and thanksgiving and love, and we, we pray that God would grant us his Holy Spirit uh, to live his law of love more and more. Right now, one of our elders at Faith, Herman Vandernald, is going to lead us in our offering update as well as our morning prayer. Herm? Thanks, Greg. Um, yeah, how deep is your love for us? A uh, quick report from the deacons. Um, just a quick update. There's no real changes this week from previous reports. Uh, the Timothy Fund is still short. If there's a soft spot in your heart for this particular ministry and at the school, and the, the deacons would just like to say thank you again for the generosity, the, uh, the gift giving, and it's, it's, it's uplifting their hearts each and every time uh, they see the, the gifts that come through. And we know that the gifts that we receive are the gifts that come from you first. So again, thank you. And uh, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, you have made each one of us in your image. And we as your people need and we love to come before you. We desire to be in your presence. Just as the psalmists write, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. You lead me beside quiet waters. You restore my soul. Before a word is even on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. And as a deer pants for streams of, of water, so my soul thirsts for you, the living God. Thank you, Lord, for these precious words. And I bring before you names of our congregation, names of those you know even before they are spoken. Um, I th we think of Ruth Quarta and Dirk and Kathleen Glaubke. Uh, we think of Tara Quarta, Wendy Vendam, Ray Medell and, and their entire family. Um, we think of John and Judy Veltzman, and we can't forget about the children, Jan and Julie and John Jr. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that um, this is a special weekend, so we remember all those who, who are serving in, in our, for our country, and we, we just pray, Lord, we remember to give thanks to all those men and women who serve. But I want to bring up before you especially um, Ben and Dan Tobin during this holiday weekend celebration. Lord, we just ask that you bless this nation its leaders, each one who makes crucial decisions within our government in regards to our religious freedoms. Lord, our seniors, our widows and widowers are always on our mind and they're also so dear to you. So keep them close to you, comfort them, fill a void where there was once a special place next to them, a loved one. Lord, we also pray for your church, not just here in Elmhurst, but throughout this world. Uh, may it continue to stand firm as Satan continues to seek its destruction. As members of our congregation are traveling this holiday weekend, Lord, we just give each one of them and ask that you give them safety and rest and bring them home safely. Lord, as we end this prayer, I just ask that one thing one thing, is, this is what I seek, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives. Hear our voice when we call. Be merciful to us and answer us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. O oh, church, arise. Church arise and put your armor on. Hear the call of Christ our captain. For now the weak can say that they are strong in the strength that God has given. With shield of faith and belt of truth, we'll stand against the devil.
In our scripture reading today, uh, we're continuing in 1 Thessalonians and continuing with the theme, the two themes especially that we find there of Christ's coming and our workaday living. We're up to the fifth chapter, verse 12. Let's pray a moment and ask God's blessing on the reading of his word. Oh, in the, oh God, in the, this next time as we go to your word and as we hear it proclaimed, um, may, may, may the words of my mouth, your servant, uh, uh, the pastor here preaching, and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. Make that so through the cleansing, strengthening power of your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's listen to God's holy and infallible word, 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning at verse 12. In my Bible, which is an NIV that I think most of us use, um, there's a little heading above verse 12, and it says, Final Instructions. So that gives us a clue about what we're going to hear. Now, we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other, and to everyone else. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. That's our scripture reading this morning. This weekend is July 4th. 
I checked out if, if there are going to be uh, fireworks with the whole COVID-19 thing, and I was surprised to see there are a good number of displays still going on, though there are also a good number that have been canceled this year. There's a kid's show, and I don't remember which one and where I heard it, but it talks about using, it, the, the, the host is like, kids, now we're going to use our memory brain. So what I want us to do is use our memory brain and think about a fireworks display. Uh, whether for me, it, it's going to have to go back a year uh, for the Ty Warner Park display in Westmont, or, or maybe some of you actually have been able to go this year. But as you think about a firework display, for most of those 20 minutes or so, fireworks are going off steadily, but there aren't too many at once, right? Sometimes there are a couple at a time. Sometimes there's a little bit of an overlap from one to the next, but mostly the show is having us focus on one. Uh, you have those typical ones that go up and the lights spread out in all the variety of colors, white or green or blue or red or yellow. Um, you also have those ones that spread way, way out. And then afterwards, there's that boom that hits you in the gut. I really like those big booming ones that also spread out. Some whistle and, and spin around. Others mainly kind of, there's not as many lights, but they just kind of boom and pop. And then there's, the, there's one that kind of spills over like a fountain, or maybe it's more like a beautiful white chandelier. And it does that either very silently or with, a, with crackles. Maybe you have a favorite uh, among those I mentioned, maybe you have a favorite that's a totally different one, but that chandelier one with the crackles, I think that's my favorite. Up until the verses that we read today, these final instructions in the book from the Apostle Paul to the church he's writing to in the Greek city of Thessalonica, we've been getting some fireworks like the first part of a fireworks show. All of God's word is precious, but then there are some real gems that stand out. And, and we've, we've had those as we've gone through the book. Uh, chapter 1, this gem, the gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power and with Holy Spirit, deep conviction. Also in chapter 1, we read, you became a model to all the believers around, and our message rang out from you. Chapter 2, he says, we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. And that was the chapter 2 where we read, we long to see you face to face, and where he said, you people, church, at, in Thessalonica, you are our joy, you are our crown. Chapter 3, we were encouraged about you because of your faith, because you are standing firm in the Lord. We also read in that chapter, may the Lord make your love abound and overflow for each other and for everyone else. Chapter 4, and I've heard in the course of this series a number of folks that, that have this as like a favorite verse of theirs. Make it your ambition to live a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands. Also in chapter 4, after talking about Jesus' return and how we're going to rise up in the air to meet the Lord, Paul simply but powerfully says, and so we will be with the Lord forever. And he says, encourage each other with these words. And it is a wonderful encouragement. Chapter 5 that we started last week, we're, we're children of the light, we're sons of the day, uh, we, we have the armor of God, we have the fruit of the Spirit, and God appointed us to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
maybe you had uh, another verse or two that meant a lot to you in the book, but those were some that really stood out to me. The verses that we just read for our reading today are like the grand finale of a fireworks show. Paul is now firing off instruction after instruction, gem after gem, lights, booms, crackles, whistles, all at once before he eventually signs off with the rich parting blessing. These verses, uh, they almost leave you breathless. There's so much packed in there. So much packed in there. But, but there's a pattern in the booms and lights. If you look at it, we're being given, we're being shown what it looks like to abound in the kingdom of God and what that abounding looks like in the church, in a local congregation where the citizens of God's kingdom you and I, where we're built up in our faith and equipped to go out in every area of life and plant seeds of kingdom truth and grace and love, and where we're equipped with God's armor to wage battle against the darkness when that's called for too. The Bible shows us here what the abounding grace of Jesus looks like in church and kingdom living. As we start, first we see the big picture of God's order. The big picture of God's order. Paul writes, as it starts out, that those who work hard among you should be respected. As it goes on, it becomes very clear he's talking about the leadership in the church, those over you in the Lord and who admonish you, like he read. So those who are working hard, giving leadership to the church, the pastors, the elders, the deacons, called by the church who have made vows before God and before us, the congregation, and were installed to these special offices. This is God's plan that people are set aside to shepherd, to serve, and to lead. 1 Corinthians 14 says, God is a God of peace. He's not a God of chaos or discord or confusion. Along those lines, he has set up an order for how things, institutions, work in the world with leadership and with respect for leadership. There's a real spirit in the world these days of, of criticizing leaders in our lives, whether they're in the church, whether they're teachers, whether it's our boss. Um, and, and the only logical conclusion to that trend as it gets worse is that it's going to result in just total chaos and confusion. And that, that lack of respect, that trend, that's not how it is or how it should be for us who believe. We know the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. We know the Bible calls government leaders God's servants. And so those like we who want to and who do abound in grace, we know and we see and we respect God's order for society. There was a man by the name of Christian Herder who was once the governor of the state of Massachusetts. He was running really hard once for a second term in office. And, and one day, after a busy morning of, of going after the votes, um, when he also didn't have lunch, and he was very, very hungry. He, he showed up at a church barbecue. It was late afternoon by that time, and Herder was famished. As, as he moved down the serving line, he held out his plate to the, the woman serving chicken, and she put a piece on his plate, and then she went to the next person in line. Excuse me, Governor Herder said, do you mind if I have another piece of chicken? 
Sorry, the woman told him, I'm supposed to give one piece of chicken to each person. But I'm starved, the governor said. Sorry, said the woman again, only one to a customer. Now, this governor herder was a pretty modest and unassuming type guy, but he decided this might be the time to throw his weight around a little. And he said, do you know who I am? I'm the governor of this state. The woman said, do you know who I am? I'm the lady in charge of the chicken. Move along, mister. On the other side of the respect that we're called to give leaders, there are responsibilities of leaders too, right? And so we should very much be in prayer for the leaders in our lives. God's put them in a special role. Um, They often if they're righteous leaders, feel the burden of their responsibilities. And and so as God's people who respect and honor God's order, we pray for our leaders. We pray that those in special leadership roles in whatever area of life they're called to serve, that they'd be faithful to their office, faithful to their calling, faithful to their work. Paul emphasizes that. He writes, hold them in highest regard, not because of who they are, not because they're such an, uh, a likable person or because of their personality or lack of personality. Hold them in high regard because of their work. The world's tendency is toward becoming an, an what we call an autocrat, a dictator, large and in charge, to abuse power when it's given to us. But, but we know that we are re- representing God himself on earth if we're in a position of leadership. In fact, that's why the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother, which speaks really to honoring all those in authority in, in society, many put that fifth commandment into the second, the, often it's in the second table of the law, and that second table is how we love our neighbors. But also many people put it with the first table as part of our responsibility to love God because it's really about honoring God ultimately when we honor our leaders. Um, regardless of the inevitable imperfections of leaders he puts in place in our lives. And so because it's about God, really, when someone in authority asks us to do something contrary to God's will, we always choose God and his word as our final and supreme authority. Moving forward, at the end of verse 13, we have another main idea, another principle for how to abound in kingdom living as well as in the church. Secondly, we focus on the objects of God's love. Focus on the objects of God's love. As believers, our focus in life has to be the same as God's as we see his work His salvation plan begun in eternity that was worked out in history with the coming of Jesus. And it's not so much about the theology of that and and how it all works and all those details, though that's all really, really important. But the point is that this was all done the way it was by our God and planned for his people. It's for people. People are the objects of God's love. And since Jesus calls us to be part of his mission, that's our focus too. People. It's all about people. Frederick the Great of Prussia once said, the more I get to know people, the more I love my dog. And we all have those moments of cynicism about people, about the world. We've all been burned by people. But God's love, which we are to have, is not focused on dogs. 
Maybe a, a little, some of us would like to believe that. But the primary object of his love, of God's love, right? Who? What is it? It's, it's you and me. Thank the Lord. Despite the fact that we have treated God in our sins against him worse than people have ever treated us. And yet he loves us. He loves me. He loves you. Amazing love. How can it be? An amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And, and we're called to the same love with some specifics. This love of people. Live in peace with each other. Encourage the timid. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Uh, be kind to each other in the church. And be kind to everybody else. And also in these instructions... We see that caring for, loving people, being about people, focusing on people, sometimes involves loving correction and giving direction when a brother or sister is off track. Warn the idle. Sometimes we all need a kick in the pants in life. Uh, sometimes we all need a, a kick in the pants in our spiritual life. Um, we need that as believers. I know I do as a pastor. Uh, maybe I need a kick in the pants sometimes as a husband too. Also, make sure no one pays back wrong for wrong. We're not in Old Testament times with Jesus coming payback mentality is over. The era of an eye for an eye has passed. Though, though sometimes we want to get revenge. We want to get back at the person who wronged us. But that's not God's way. Though the world tends to abound in that and payback and, and revenge, I'll get them as they shake their fist. Instead, we abound in grace and forgiveness. There are leadership structures in the church in the world, there are systems, there is order, there are critical truths about God and us and our world, about the universe and nature, but it's all about people, according to God's word. That's the point of the order, that's the point of, of the truth and our church and God's kingdom, that we bring God's grace to people. Reverend John Sherman is a name that uh, many of you maybe know. He was the longtime pastor at Wheaton CRC. He's now retired. He and his wife, Janet, have been going through some really, really tough times. I've been following along on their Caring Bridge page, and maybe some of you have too. Janet's been dealing with a very serious cancer diagnosis these past months. John just had a, a shoulder surgery that went really quite poorly, and he's just in a ton of pain. And on top of it, in the course of that surgery, they discovered a bunch of cancer in his body, too. John's right now in a rehab facility, and the last couple updates have been about John's roommate. Uh, to save his privacy, I'm going to call him Don, this roommate. Don is in very poor health. He's in a lot of pain. He uses crude language as he cries out in agony. And in the midst of Pastor John's own trials and very severe pain, he's been asking us who read his updates to be praying for Don. And I'm just so impressed with that focus on what's most important by Pastor John. People. The person God has put right in front of him. And he's praying for him. From personal experience, I know that when you're feeling poorly yourself, it's really, really hard to get beyond and to look beyond your own discomfort, your own pain, your nausea, your worries, whatever it is. But Pastor John is looking beyond himself, of course, with God's strength. And it's an incredible example for us and of how we can focus on the, the objects of God's love, people, even in our trials, because God has given us so much grace that it spills over to those around us. There's a little bit more to this story. Because Don is very crude, and he's really surly and difficult towards those who are caring for him. 
one of those patients, you know. Pastor John was assuming and thinking that this was, that Don was clearly uh, uh, not a believer, a secular person who did not know the Lord. And so he's been praying for him and asking us to pray for him with that in mind. But then in the most recent update about Pastor John's rehab and Pastor John's roommate, Pastor John shares that he overheard Don on the phone talking about when his church was going to open up again. And Don ended the conversation with whoever he was talking to, well, say a prayer for me. And Pastor John was just floored. And so were the rest of us who had been reading along about this guy he's been praying for. Here he had been quietly praying for Don and had asked dozens of other people to pray for him through these journal updates, thinking that Don would have been resistant to those prayers, that he wouldn't have wanted that. But it turns out he is a believer, and he's just really, really struggling. And, and so after discovering that, Pastor John was able to share all those prayers for Don, and it just meant so much to him. And their relationship, of course, has gone to a whole nother level, knowing now that they're both brothers in Christ. When we focus on those God loves around us, people, the ones that God has put in our life, we're going to be amazed at what happens and what God will do. Finally, today, moving forward into verses 16 through 22, there's a call to examine yourself in light of God's work. Examine yourself in light of God's work. This too is really key if we are going to abound in the church and in the kingdom, wherever God calls us to serve him and others. Examine yourself. Check yourself. Not so much in a self-help way, but I, I have there in light of God's work because we examine ourselves in connection to God's saving work in history and his work in our hearts and lives. It's his work. Jesus' death and resurrection that the Spirit brings to us and that makes us abound in grace and makes us desire that. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Our faith is not a cold, dry, stuffy faith. It's vibrant with the Holy Spirit's fire. Our faith moves us. Don't treat prophecies with contempt. For the church today, this is especially about uh, the proclamation, the preaching, and the teaching of God's Word. We take that seriously as Christians. We know it's critical to our, our spiritual growth and self-examination and to changing us to be more and more who God wants us to be. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. And so... I want to encourage you to examine yourself in light of God's work. Check yourself, your, your heart. Are, are, are you all that you can be because of what he has done for you to save you, uh, to fill you with his spirit, to make you his very own? A young couple moved into a new neighborhood the first morning there, they were eating breakfast, um, and, and the young woman was looking out the window. They both were. She saw the neighbor hanging the wash outside. That laundry isn't very clean, she remarked. She doesn't know how to wash correctly, clearly. Maybe, maybe she needs better laundry soap or something. Her husband just looked on and kind of smiled. Oh, he didn't even smile, I don't think. He just was kind of silent. Every time her neighbor hung out her wash to dry, the young woman made the same sort of comment. A month later, the woman is really surprised to see nice, clean wash on the line and says to her husband, look, she finally figured it out. She finally knows how to wash correctly. I wonder who showed her. The husband replied, 
I got up early this morning and cleaned our windows, honey. And that's how it can be in our lives. The clarity of our vision of others and the world and God's church and kingdom can really depend on what's going on in our heart. And that's why, because it affects our, our vision, that's why God wants us to examine ourselves. In Matthew 7, verse 8, Jesus says, First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. And so, dear faith church friends, you're going to abound in grace in the church and everywhere you go when you prayerfully give good attention to yourself in addition to being aware of God's order and God's people, the objects of his and our love. May the Holy Spirit keep us overflowing with grace, abounding with grace for the glory and the expansion of his name and his kingdom in our lives everywhere. Amen. Let's pray. Oh God, thank you for uh, your, your love for us that we sang of earlier in this worship service. Would your love ignite in us uh, a flame uh, to serve you in all the ways you call us to. Uh, and we think of the, the big areas of abounding in grace in church and kingdom today in our reading. Work those into our hearts, we pray. In your name, amen. We're going to sing together um, a song of response. Uh, Jesus, with thy church abide. Let's sing this, making it our prayer. Friends, brothers, and sisters, receive this parting blessing today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.